Learning how to strengthen your knees should be a priority for anyone interested in functional performance. Powerful legs are key to athleticism and agility. Training the knees can lead to amazing jump height, impressive running speed and powerful kicks. If you've ever had a bad knee on the other hand, I have, I had one for more than two years, you'll know how it can affect nearly every movement and make you feel about 20 years older. And yet, knee pain is extremely common and very misunderstood. In this post, my aim is to talk you through how to strengthen knees that are in any shape, whether you're trying to rehab or prehab your knees and recover from injury, or build invincible knees like pneumatic pistons. That said, if you do experience knee pain, then I highly recommend that you speak to a professional first. There are countless things that could be causing knee pain, and there's no way to know what's affecting you without having someone physically present. It could even be an infection, in which case no amount of weird squats are gonna fix you. With that out of the way though, on with the weird squats. When thinking about how to strengthen the knees, we must first focus on the muscles surrounding the knees. That means the quads and the hamstrings. The quads act on the quadriceps tendon, which connects to the patella, kneecap, and the patella connects to the tibia, shin, via the patella tendon. However, it's also important to strengthen the tendons themselves, which is a missing component in many training programs. Also important are the glutes and smaller supporting muscles around the ankles and hips. These help to keep the knees straight and prevent twisting and other issues. One thing to keep in mind when trying to prevent injury is that these muscles are always working. For many of the muscles surrounding the knee, your daily routine is an endurance test. Accidents can therefore happen when one of those muscles becomes fatigued, resulting in imbalances that can affect the position of the knee or the tracking of the kneecap. Therefore, to prevent injury, we need to focus on strength endurance, not just max strength. Finally, we need to consider the years of damage that come from running and jumping with incorrect form. This can cause inflammation in the tendons and wear away at the cartilage. Imbalance is the key word here. Should your adductors be stronger than your abductors, your knees will cave inwards creating the valgus knee. This is not a strong position to be squatting or landing from a jump and it can easily cause injury. A spring can't work properly unless it lands exactly straight. One of the best ways to fix this issue is by strengthening the glutes. The gluteus maximus is responsible among other things for external rotation of the hip. Thus, it helps to keep the legs pointing forwards during long runs. The gluteus medius, meanwhile, is the prime mover when it comes to hip abduction, moving the legs apart. The gluteus minimus is likewise a hip abductor. Together with other muscles like the tensor fasciae latae, these muscles help to keep the knee straight and hips balanced when you're on one leg. This can also help to prevent ITB pain. The iliotibial band originates at the crest of the pelvis, above the hip, and runs to the outside of the knee. It's attached to the gluteus medius, quadriceps and hamstrings. Problems occur when an individual spends all their time running in straight lines, strengthening these muscles in the sagittal plane, but don't practice any side-to-side -side hip movement in the frontal plane. Running is not the problem here, just running is the problem. Likewise, ankle and foot stability is another component to look at if you want to know how to strengthen your knees. Ideally, we want these three joints to be stacked so that the legs can properly absorb impact like a spring and so that the patella can track properly over the joint. Flat feet can cause the foot to collapse inwards, for instance, over pronate, which tilts and rotates the tibia, thereby misaligning the joint. Even those that don't suffer from flat feet may be hampering their knee's ability to absorb impact. Wearing shoes with big cushioned soles, for example, might absorb impact in the short term, but by encouraging a heel strike, they also put the ankle far too far forwards. This means that the leg is straight with the center of gravity behind it. As such, the knee and ankle are powerless to flex and absorb the shock. Repeatedly running like this can gradually wear down the cartilage in the knees and cause other issues such as tendonitis and shin splints. So those are the common knee problems causing weak and painful knees. Now how do you actually strengthen them? First, we need to reduce imbalances and strengthen the hips. The most popular way to do this is with hip abduction exercises. Lie on one side and raise the leg on top into the air. If you find this hard, there's a good chance that hip weakness is a contributing factor for your knee pain. This can be effective for reactivating the hip abductors and improving awareness of the muscle so that you use it more during movement. Likewise, it's possible to train the flexor digitorum longus, which flexes the four smaller toes, and the flexor hallucius longus, which does the same thing for the big toe. I made a video about this and discussed using bands, for example, or simply digging the feet into the floor, but we'll see another way to train these muscles that is a little less time consuming. 
So one great exercise you can use to rehab or prehab the knees or just as a warm up is knee circles. And I got this from Strengthside, which is a fantastic YouTube channel. You should definitely check it out. So basically what you do is you stand with your feet together, knees just slightly bent, hands on the knees, and then all you're gonna do is draw little circles around like that. Make sure to go in both directions. And what you're doing is just allowing the knees and the hips to move as they normally would in order to adjust to the movement of the knees. And this just helps to activate all those muscles, all that proprioception, get it working together so that when you're running or jumping or whatever, they can do their job and don't miss a beat. Generally, I prefer to train these muscles as they were intended to be used. In the case of the hip muscles, that means stabilizing the legs. This will better train the movement patterns we want to learn and it will strengthen them in a useful manner. If you suffer from knee pain and you suspect that weak hips might be responsible, try the 100 up. This exercise was created by Walter Goodall George, who used the technique to become an unbeatable long distance runner. He also broke the world record for the fastest mile in 1886. The 100 up involves running or marching on the spot with high knees, bringing them up to your chest on each repetition. We're aiming for high volume here, as the name suggests we want 100 repetitions on each side, but build up to that if it's too much to begin with. If you're in pain, you can perform this movement by slowly raising one foot, only once the other is planted on the ground. The jogging version of the movement is the major and the slowing stepping version is called the minor. You can even hold onto something for balance. As you do though, focus on keeping the hips aligned and ankles straight as much as you can. Return the foot to the same place on the ground every time. The goal is to move with alignment throughout every step, even as you begin to fatigue. This will also develop the hip flexors and quads. Oh, and we want to hit the floor with the forefoot on each rep. More on that in a moment. Of course, you can do the same thing when walking, simply being mindful to keep everything aligned as possible. And as you become more confident, you can do the same thing with running too. This is the reason I always recommend steady state running as a part of anyone's training regime. It's not just about strengthening the heart, lowering blood pressure, aiding recovery by encouraging circulation and improving cardiovascular endurance. Although that's all very good stuff. The other thing about running is that it is one of the most functional, fundamental movements there is. Running teaches you to move your legs properly, to maintain a strong core, to relax the shoulders and to stabilize at the hips. Even if you only run once a week, you'll get these benefits and you'll feel much stronger while also boosting your work capacity. The real trick though, is to use trail running in minimal shoes. These are shoes with low heel to toe drop, thin sole and wide toe box. This combination forces a forefoot stride, allowing the legs to compress under the center of gravity as they're supposed to. At the same time, the toes are able to splay and spread to contour to the shape of the ground underneath. Trail running, of course, means running on off-road terrain, and those even surfaces will even further train these muscles of the foot and ankle, as you try and account for all the different levels and dips and curves, while simultaneously encouraging more natural side-to-side -side movement. And don't just run in a straight line, weave around trees and jump over small obstacles. Again, you'll need to build up to this. Don't throw on a pair and then run a marathon. But once you're confident, you'll be invincible. While filming a series of training videos for iFit this summer, I jogged around and walked the equivalent of 54 miles, that's 89 kilometers, over three consecutive days. That was all uphill, through woods, on all kinds of different surfaces. I did it in Vivo barefoot shoes and I felt great. Simply wearing barefoot shoes throughout the day is an amazing passive approach to strengthening the knees. So this way we develop resilient legs without worrying about the tight IT band. We can further avoid this by incorporating exercises in the frontal plane. There's the skater hop or agility ladder on the easier end and movements like the Cossack squat on the more advanced side. Of course, this stuff is also fantastic for athletes as it helps with direction changes and weaving. ACL injuries happen most often when cutting to the side or rapidly decelerating. The ACL is a ligament in the knee and it's one of the most common sites of injury. Finally, one more tool for developing powerful hip stability and therefore rock solid knees is the farmer's walk. This is especially true if you use an uneven load, carrying something on one hand. Now your hips need to stabilize against the weight over a long distance, building massive strength endurance. Oh, and of course, we can also add any number of one-legged exercises as we become more confident. That means things like the pistol squat, step up, deep lunges, I like lunge walks, and Bulgarian split squat. I also recommend adding some calf movements in there too, as the gastrocnemius actually contributes to knee flexion and crosses that joint. Of course, we need the quads, hamstrings, and calves together if we want to maximally increase jump height. As well as strengthening the muscles around the knee joint, we can also strengthen the tendons within the knee, the quadriceps tendon and the patella tendon. 
This will further reduce the risk of injury. Moreover, this can result in enhanced performance for running and jumping, as stronger tendons are able to exert more force. So to do this, we can use movements that take the knees past the toes, strengthening the joint in the full range of motion. Examples include the Bulgarian split squat, Hindu squat and sissy squat. Yes, the knees can pass the toes, and not just during a squat. Knees pass the toes every time you go up or down stairs. They do it when you get up from a chair. Adding resistance in this position will only make them tougher. The body has remarkable ability to adapt. The knees are no different. Saying that sissy squats are bad for the knees because they put stress on the tendon is like saying that bicep curls are bad for the biceps because they put stress on the bicep. That's kind of the point. But likewise, if you've never done a curl before in your life and you try and curl 30 kilograms or you climb 50 meters of rope, then you're looking at a torn bicep. As with the bicep example, the best thing you can do is to slowly increase the amount of weight to thereby fortify the muscle tendon units against future injury. Likewise, if your knee is twisted, you can still cause injury. So it's a case of slowly, slowly catchy monkey. We should focus on strengthening the knee joint itself only once it is moving in a mechanically sound manner. Of course, I can't talk about the knees coming over the toes without mentioning the knees over toes guy himself, Ben Patrick. Patrick is a passionate advocate for moving the knees past the toes, which he famously does with his ATG split squat. This is a loaded split squat where the knees come over the toes. You start with the front leg elevated, but then move to a full range of motion as mobility improves. The great thing about this is that it not only strengthens the knee, Patrick went from a 19 inch vertical to a 42 inch, but also enhances mobility. That's because it's a weighted stretch, which by the way, is also a huge benefit of the Cossack squat. I feel these two would complement each other nicely. Patrick says he can now perform scissor splits despite never having trained for the move. He pairs this with seated good mornings to provide the torso benefits missing from the back squat and plenty of other exercises. I've not done the program, but I've watched a lot of his videos and I definitely recommend checking out his channel. The results speak for themselves. Ben has a huge number of success stories and has helped huge numbers of people to recover from debilitating knee pain, not to mention leaping high in the air. Of course, Ben doesn't recommend that you start with a split squat, but instead suggests that you start much lighter. The first progression is simply walking backwards, which you can't do without bending the knees over the toes. Ben suggests that you cumulatively build up to 100 miles of backward walking. Later, you can add resistance by pushing a sled or dragging a sandbag, which is my favorite option. This is a concentric only exercise. It's not loaded, so it's very safe and gentle. Two options that I personally recommend are the Hindu squats for high repetition and bunny hops. Hindu squats are squats performed on the balls of the feet. Do a hundred of these and feel the quad burn. Bunny hops are a traveling exercise that involve bouncing along the ground with the legs bent. This builds that elastic springiness that you really need for great jumping. I got this tip from Vava Fitness, which is another great channel you should check out. One of the key aspects of all these strategies is the high volume. Remember, the body is designed to adapt to the environment it's placed in. When you train, you're fighting your main stimuli, your daily habits, to trigger change that you don't technically need. This is why simply avoiding moving a painful joint is a huge mistake, as you aren't creating a need for the body to get healthy. Moving as much as you can comfortably, and then gradually building on that is a far better approach. Performing a few lateral leg raises with a resistance band each week is only gonna do so much if you've been forming bad movement habits for years and years, or just not moving at all. But dedicating yourself to walking five miles a day while being mindful of your form is a whole different story. Likewise, performing 100 daily Hindu squats, likewise 100 miles backwards over time, likewise performing 100 ups or bunny hopping to the shops. That repetition forces the brain to practice and reinforce crucial neural pathways. It builds connections between muscles via changes in the fascia, and it supplies those more often used muscles with increased blood flow. That alone is why low intensity, high repetition is so effective at healing damaged tissue. It floods the area with blood, oxygen, and nutrients. After a tough workout, a gentle walk is one of the best things you can do to encourage recovery. And thus you'll actually see profound changes to your physique and your motor patterns. And it's from here that you can begin to safely add weight, explosive movements, and challenge. You must become functional before you can become super functional. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting guys. If you did, then please leave a like and share it around. That helps me out immensely. Let me know in the comments down below if there's anything I've missed, if you've ever dealt with knee pain and what you did to recover from it. If you do want to become more functional and learn more about moving in healthy patterns and a wide variety of different modalities, then check out my new book, Functional Training and Beyond, which is out now in the US and out very soon. 
in the UK and Europe. You can get it from Amazon and pretty much any other bookstore, and I'll leave some links to that in the description down below. Thank you so much to everyone who's bought a copy and reviewed it. Reviews help massively on Amazon, so that means a great deal. Alternatively, if you're ready to start training, then I have a full ebook and training program, Super Functional Training, that combines countless different ideas from different forms of training into a single program that you can start using today. You get a written workout as well as lots of information to explain what everything does and how to adapt it to your own lifestyle and training. There's a discount on that right now whilst many of us are in lockdown still. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description down below. Subscribe if you want more like this, hit the bell button if you want to be notified of new videos, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching this one, and bye for now.